Hi, Verbling. My name is Michaela. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, and today we're talking about the future. The materials are on the same link where you join class. And Anna Carolina, welcome to class. How are you? Hi, Michaela. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. What have you been up to? I have had a wonderful weekend, and I saw the movie Trainwreck which is like my new favorite movie. I thought it was awesome. It is probably the only romantic comedy movie I've ever actually enjoyed. Have you seen that movie yet, Ana Carolina? No, teacher. I went to the VIP movie theater uh, this weekend. I, I went to Rio, but I saw a movie that I didn't like uh, called movie? Pixels. Pixels. A very silly plot. Was it a kids movie? Yes. Mm -hmm. Got it. And but I I went to the theater to see a play as well, and it nice. was nice. Excellent. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. <laughs> exactly. But uh, at least the environment, uh, in in the movie theater was awesome. It was a VIP movie theater, and the chair reclines and so on. Excellent. All right. Um, Camilla, welcome to class. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, do we have two? Oh, we've got two Camillas here. Okay, sorry yeah. about that. Um, how about Camilla with a C start? Tell me how you are, and tell me about the last movie you saw. Um. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Um. Which Camilla? Camilla with a C. Uh, uh, the last movie I saw was The Minions. How was it? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was fun. What did you like about it? Mm, the little minions are so cute. <laughs> <laughs> totally true. Awesome. Thank you, Camilla with a C. I'm going to be calling you Camilla with a C, and the other one will be Camilla with a K. All right. Hello. Camilla with a K, how are you? Uh, hello, I'm fine. I think this is my first time with you, right? Yeah, exactly. It's wonderful to meet you, Camilla with a K. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Poland. Cool. So tell us about the last movie you saw. Uh, the same as previous Camilla. It was Minions. <laughs> when? <laughs> Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. it. It was funny. What did you like about it? The humor? Yeah, humor. Who did you go to see it with? Uh, with my uh, younger brother. Oh, cute. <laughs> well, it's good to have you in class, Camilla with the K. And Ahmed, welcome to class. Hello, how are you? I'm doing very well. Ahmed, tell us about the last movie you saw. Um, it's uh, Interstellar. Oh, I heard good things about that one. Did you like it? Uh, I think it's the uh, best movie I've, I have ever seen. What? <laughs> Why? It's a type of science fiction movie, and um, it's a, a very difficult movie to understand. Uh, I love uh, this type of movies, so... So I cool, you're it. making me regret that I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, you have to see it. All right, I will. Thanks for the recommendation, Ahmed. Thank you. And Carolina, Kat Carolina, how are you? Hi, teacher. I am good, and you? I'm doing very well. I was just telling the class how I saw Trainwreck, which is my new favorite movie. I love it. Um, Carolina, when's the last time you went to see a movie, and what did you see? Carolina, are you there? Hello? No? All right, Kat, Carolina, I cannot hear you if you're speaking to me. Um, try and refresh, maybe? In the meantime, Ksenia, tell us about the last movie you saw. Hello. Mm, I don't remember, but I think the last, it was a horror. It's uh, was in 
in Cedars chapter three. How was it? Chapter three? Like um, the yes. is it a trilogy? Like there's three? No, it's a, it's a different story, but they are, they are connected connected between each other. Got it. So, did you enjoy it? I like uh, the first chapter, but I don't like second, and I don't like the third one. I think that's a common pattern. I feel the same way about a lot of movies. Like, the first one's so good, and then the second one's like, eh, and the third one's not great, and sometimes yeah. the sequel's better, but a lot of times it's not. I think it's first impression. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. You come in with all these expectations, and then it's, you know, not as revolutionary as the first one, so it's disappointing. Yes. All right. Mustafa, welcome to class, and tell us about the last movie you saw. Hello, teacher. Thank you. I don't remember, teacher, to be honest with you. You can ask me, <laughs> what's the last TV show I have watched? Sure. Uh, yeah. And it was like uh, The Flash. And uh, it is uh, like uh, a supernatural uh, show, and I enjoyed it. It's really cool. Awesome. That sounds good. Is it like action? It is uh, action, yeah. It's talking about the uh, <laughs> fastest man in the world, something like that. So it's supernatural. You see a lot of uh, people with the power, with a lot of power. And uh, yeah, exciting. It was exciting for me. Awesome. Thanks, Mustafa. Thank you. Philip, welcome to class. Tell us about the last movie you saw. Thank you, teacher. It's a long time I haven't been in a movie theater. Really? But, How come? Yes, but at home I I look uh, videos. So the so, last video, go ahead. the assassination of uh, President uh, Kennedy. Whoa, how was it? No, it was full of uh, intrigues. Very suspenseful film? Very suspenseful, yes, and a lot of revelations. Very cool. Yeah, mm. I haven't seen that one either. Mm. I don't know what I'm waiting for. I should get on it. Mm, okay. All right, and Rohan, welcome to class. Hi. Rohan, what's the last movie you saw? Uh, last movie, I think it was Jurassic Park. That's an oldie. Did you like it? Yeah, I like it. I was quite surprised how much I liked it. Was that the first time you saw it, or have you seen it before? No, I mean the new J Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot there was another one that came out. When did that come out? I think uh, maybe one or two months ago. I totally missed it. Sometimes yeah. I'm like out of the loop with movies. <laughs> I don't yeah. watch a lot of TV, so I don't see the commercials. You know, they always here they always have those commercials, the trailers. Yeah. And I don't watch a lot of TV, so I don't see the trailers. And if I don't see the trailers, I don't know the movie's out. <laughs> yeah. <missed> it. <laughs> it's a good movie. Awesome. So did it match up to your expectations of like yeah. what you thought it would be like? No, because it's the part four now. So I saw one, two, and three. So you think you will you will see the same, and of course it is the same. It's about dinosaurs, but this time they change things up a bit. New actors, new crew, new place, new park. So it was really great. New technology, cool. of course. Yeah. yeah. Really great new technology. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks. I think I hit everyone. Um, so let's get started with the topic of the day, which is the future. We're going to be talking about the future and how we navigate using different tenses to talk about the future. So let's see what you guys already know. Does anyone have a lot of information they'd like to volunteer about what tenses we can use in the future? Nobody? What tenses can we use? about Anna Carolina. You're always very vocal. Tell us, what do you think? What tenses are appropriate for the future? Okay. Uh, you can use the present continuous mm -hmm. to talk about the future. You can use the future, 
the simple future, uh, the future progressive. Mm -hmm. what, what else, teacher? There's a few others, but I like that you gave us a variety because a lot of times, like in English, of course, we've got lots of different tenses, but the one that people kind of get stuck using is usually the simple future, right? Will. Students generally get stuck using that for everything in the future when it actually is not the most appropriate tense a lot of the time. So today we're going to talk a little bit about four different ways we can speak in the future and the reasons why we use one or the other. The differences are very subtle sometimes, but we'll go over all of that. I'm going to sh screen share for you guys and we'll start to talk about this. So to begin with, we're just going to get some sentences about these topics and then we're going to assess whether they were correct or not later once we've learned a little bit more. So I'm going to have you guys say some things. Don't worry about being correct because we haven't learned anything yet in this class. And if you make a mistake, it'll just be an extra opportunity for us to talk about it later. So I'm going to go around and ask a couple people to give me your uh, arrangements for this evening. I'm going to start with Rohan. Can you give me some arrangements for this evening? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by arrangements. Plans? Is that the same as yeah, plans? plans? Yeah, plans for this evening. Do you have okay. any? Yeah, my plans is uh, that I'm, I w I'm taking a class now and after this I will take another class and after that probably watch a TV show and uh, yeah, after that I will go to bed. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. And Philip, give me some arrangements as well for this evening. If you have any. If you don't, that's okay too. Yes, I'll go down and check my mailbox. Then I'll hit my uh, my my food, my my sopa. And sure. after I will attend classes. And, okay. then to, and then go to bed. Awesome. Thank you very much, Philip. Let's get one more person on the arrangements. Mustafa, do you have any arrangements for this evening? It's already pretty late for you, huh? Yeah, it's pretty late for me. <laughs> <laughs> Almost my plan is ended for my day uh, today. What's okay? Like, uh, I don't know, like, maybe I'm going to, like, uh, maybe watch some uh, video or a tape about maybe, maybe stories. I'm not sure. Maybe watching movie. Maybe open. I, I I'm gonna like open, or make a plan for my next day. This is this is a good one. And okay. Yeah, this is one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mustafa. And Ksenia, let's start the next one. Your intentions for the rest of the year. Mm, I'm going to last if you kilograms. <laughs> also, I'm going to visit few countries. And I think that's all. All right. Losing a little weight and exploring the world. Those are pretty cool intentions for the rest of this year. Camilla, will you give us some of your intentions for the rest of the year? Mm, which Camilla? Oh, sorry. Uh, Camilla with a K. Uh, okay, so I'm going to uh, go somewhere abroad uh, for uh, holidays, and um, I'm also going to learn English uh, and uh, German. Um, and I think that that's all. All right, those are some good intentions too. Thank you, Camilla with the K. Um, Camilla with a C. Yeah, give me one more for the intentions for the rest of the year. What are your intentions? Uh, I have to present uh, the exam for the university. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going for vacations in uh, December. Where are you going? Uh, I want to go to Santa Marta. It's a beach. 
Awesome. Nothing better than a beach when you're on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you, Camilla with a C. All right, Anna Catalina, will you give us predictions for the planet in the year 2020? Okay. We will be using new devices, smaller computers, maybe a flexible computer that we we will be able to fold them. Yeah. You will be able um, to what? To put them in our pocket. Mm. I said fold, but I'm not sure about the verb. What? How do you spell that verb? Oh, fold. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Fold, sure, that's good. And we, the, the world will be more populated, of course, and we will experience more natural disasters, unfortunately, due to global warming. Mm. Unless we we find a solution. All right. Thank you for your predictions, Ana Carolina. Ahmed, give us a couple more predictions for the year 2020. Um, okay, I want to be more uh, optimistic about our planet. Um, I think our planet will be uh, will be more uh, safe place. Okay. It will be a I safer think, place, you said. Yeah, a safer place. Okay. And also, we we will be have uh, more peace uh, between all countries. That's optimistic. Nice ideas. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I put those all in the chat box, and then once we've gone over some of the rules, we're going to go back to those sentences and just decide if they were said in the best way possible or if we could change them a little bit to make more sense. Because, of course, most of those sentences, in fact, I think all of those sentences, were fine the way that they were. And if you, if you want to, of course, you can just say, we will do this, we will do that, and sometimes it's appropriate, sometimes it's less appropriate. Nothing was wrong with them, but the way native speakers use the language, we make kind of a subconscious choice about when we use will and when we don't use will. So that's what we're going to learn about, and then we're going to go back to those sentences and change them a little bit if necessary. So moving down, we have the rules. They're pretty simple rules, and I'm sure you guys cannot see this well, so I'm going to make this a little larger for you. Okay, that's better, right? Let's get started. So these are the four tenses we're going to focus on right now. Like we talked about earlier, there are a couple other future tenses like will plus the continuous or even will plus the perfect. And we might have time to go over those at the end of class, but for now we're going to focus on these and why and where we use these. So. The first couple focus on those two. How about Rohan? Will you read about the simple present and going to plus the infinitive? Yeah. Uh, present simple time, tablet events, for example, TV program or train departure, going to plus infinitive predictions when you can see the evidence, general future intentions not arranged. Decisions already made. Awesome. Thank you very much. So that's a lot of information in just a few words. For present simple, we use them for scheduled things. And I'm going to ask you guys to make a few examples. How about Ahmed and Ana Carolina write sentences in the chat box that show us how we can use the simple present to talk about the future when we're using schedules, timetabled events, or some other kind of set routine. On the next one, we've got going to plus the infinitive, which we use to talk about predictions when you can see the evidence, meaning you know, like, there are clouds, so you know that it's going to rain because there's evidence. And let's have Camilla with a C and Carolina, Cat Carolina. Will you give us an example of a prediction when you can see the evidence? talking about the future using going to in an infinitive? 
<clears throat> the next one is a general future intention that you have not yet arranged, meaning you haven't bought any tickets or you haven't really done anything. It's just kind of like a vague goal you have for the future. Um, Camilla with a K and Ksenia, write an example of that in the chat box. And then the next one, decisions already made. That means it's something that you've thought about before and you're just telling someone. So if someone says, what are you going to have for dinner? And I already thought about what I was going to have for dinner. I might say, oh, I'm going to have pasta with whatever. So it's a decision that I thought about previously and already made. So we use going to plus the infinitive. Mustafa, Philip, and Rohan give us an example of that in the chat box. If you guys have any questions while you're writing, please feel free to ask. Yes, uh, should I, I write about the uh, timetable event? Yeah, something event. scheduled in the simple present. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have pizza for dinner. Excellent example, Rohan, of a decision already made. Um, the airplane takes off in 20 minutes. Yeah, that's a timetabled event. It's a great example because those are all going to be things that you can't really decide or control. You're not going to call up the airport and say, hey, I'd like a plane that leaves at around 10 o'clock. That'd be great. Thank you. Right? It's someone else's decision. I'm going to get another education. Okay, so that I think is supposed to be a general future intention. Well done, Ksenia. Um, usually we don't use education as something that's countable, um, but maybe if you're talking about a specific education, like education in a particular topic, it could work. Next up, the class gets started in five minutes. Awesome, another example of a timetabled event. I'm going to attend the next class that I have booked before. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to attend the next class. Awesome. That would be like a decision already made. Um, but I wouldn't use the present perfect for that last part, I would say, that I booked before. Just a one-time thing. You booked it. Next up, I'm going to have another term with Erbling. Philip, when you say term, what do you mean? Like your subscription? Yes, for three months again. Awesome. Okay. So you renewed your, your subscription. I'm, yeah. Okay. That works. Excellent sentence. Thank you, Philip. And we have a couple in the Verbling chat box as well. Tomorrow, I'm going to wash my cat. That sounds like a decision already made. Maybe a general future intention, but probably a decision already made since it's something about tomorrow. They are going to be boyfriend and girlfriend because they are in love with each other. Very romantic sentence. Thank you, Maria. And I'm going to do the laundry tomorrow. Awesome. Excellent examples. I think I read them all. Do you guys have any questions on those before we move on to the next set? You guys are masters already. Okay. So the next set is present continuous and will plus infinitive. And how about Mustafa? Will you read those for us? Okay, teacher. Present continuous. Personal arrangements. Second one. Oil plus infinitive. Predictions based on no evidence. Decision made at the time of speaking. Promises. Offers. Refusals. Thank you very much. And before we go into those, I have one more sentence from the last set that I forgot to read. There is an English exam next Thursday. That's a perfect example of a timetabled event. Thank you, Ahmed. Okay. So now let's get into these. This time we're going to use present continuous and the traditional will plus an infinitive to talk about the future. Present continuous we use to talk about personal arrangements. And that usually means something that you do not consult other people about. So I'm going to shower this evening. I'm not going to like ask anyone, oh, can I shower this evening? That's my personal hygiene. It's my own arrangement. So we use present continuous to talk about those kinds of personal arrangements 
in the future. The next one, will plus infinitive, is a prediction when we don't have very much evidence. So maybe it's too far in the future, or we, don't, we can't really see what's going to happen, but we're making a prediction anyways. A decision made at the time of speaking. So if someone asks you something that you didn't think about before, but now you're thinking about it, you'd use will plus the infinitive. And that one's kind of distinctly different from a decision already made that we saw in the last section. And then the last few here, promises, offers, and refusals. Things like, I will never smoke again. You're making a promise. Or, will you have a drink would be an offer. So any questions on those? Let's do this. We're going to make a few more sentences, starting with, Rohan and Philip, can you do the present continuous personal arrangements? So write a sentence using those. Mustafa and Ksenia use predictions based on no evidence using will plus the infinitive. Camilla with a K and Carolina, Kat Carolina. Um, a decision made at the time of speaking. So if someone asked you a question you had never thought about before and you had to answer, you'd use will. Camilla with a C and Ana Carolina, will you write a promise using will? And Ahmed, can you write us an offer or a refusal that uses will plus an infinitive? We have some already in the chat box. Everything will be okay. Excellent promise. I'm going to buy a new food processor. Right, that's a perfect personal arrangement. Something you didn't really consult anyone about, just your own decision. He promised that he will do the dishes. Okay, so probably an S on that. He promises that. He will do the dishes. Excellent, Camilla with a C. It will be a horrible world crisis in one year. Okay, negative sentence, but well done. Well thought out ideas there. We don't see, we don't see much evidence of that. Or hopefully we don't see much evidence of that. I will be resigned with your decision. Hmm. Um, first, we should say resigned to. If you're going to talk about it that way, you'd say, I'm resigned to your decision. I'm resigned to take the course that I need to. Um, but I think the, the verb be is sort of unnecessary. So maybe you should say something like, I will resign to your decision. Or I will resign to follow your instructions, maybe. Okay. Um, okay, I will do this exercise for you. Excellent sentence, Camilla. Very applicable to what we're talking about now. Next up, I'm going to purchase a new next week. Ah, a new car next week. Okay. Excellent. So that is actually a really interesting one because it's hard to separate ones that are continuous and ones that are going to plus an infinitive. So the one that you wrote is actually going to plus an infinitive. And that would be like a decision you already made or perhaps a general future intention. But because it's next week, probably a decision already made. You could change that one if you wanted to say, I'm purchasing a new car next week. And just so you guys know, both sentences are totally correct, but they give your words a different flavor, right? If he says, I'm going to, purchase, I know that it's a decision he's already made. If he's saying, I'm purchasing, 
I know it's a personal arrangement. So it kind of changes the way things are. Sometimes it makes a bigger difference than other times, but both are grammatically correct. Just the context sometimes can be tricky about when is most appropriate to use one and when it's appropriate to use another. A few more sentences. I'm not sure if I will be succeed in my final exams. So excellent sentence. Um, we can't say succeed. I'm not, you can say, I'm not sure if I will succeed in my final exams. And that could be like a prediction based on no evidence maybe, although you're not really making a prediction. But I think that's a good one. It kind of goes with the prediction element. I like it. It works. Okay, let's go back to Anna's sentence. I agree uh, that Anna's sentence was a little confusing. And let's see. <laughs> so I should say, I will resign to your decision. Yeah, yeah, I will resign to your decision is a much better sentence than the original we had in there. Okay, do you, I know we have a couple more sentences to go in the Verbling chat box, but do you guys have any questions until now about the sentences we've seen or why some are correct or not? No? We'll get plenty of practice today so you guys are a little more confident in this, but I'm going to read the rest of the sentences in the Verbling chat. Oh, there's just one. I will visit my friends as soon as I can. Okay. So that sounds like a promise, I think. Yeah. Or maybe a decision made at the time of speaking. It could be a decision made at the time of speaking. Sometimes these things have like really subtle differences and they depend on context that we don't necessarily have. But if someone were to say, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? And you hadn't thought about it yet, it hadn't occurred to you, you have no plans, you might go, um, well, I think I'll visit my friend as soon as I can. So. That would be a good one for decision made at the time of speaking. Okay. Another example of a decision made at the time of speaking, because I think that one's kind of a difficult one. We've got decisions already made and then decisions made at the time of speaking. A really good example is when the phone rings and maybe there's a few people in the house. So if you have like a house phone and there's multiple people, this does, it's not very common anymore, but usually a person would say, oh, I'll get it, like telling everyone else, don't worry about picking up the phone, I'll answer it, right? And that's a decision you make at the time of speaking, so it's also one where we use will plus an infinitive. You couldn't have thought of it earlier because you didn't know someone was going to call, but once someone has called, you'd say, I'll get it right then. Okay, no questions, right? You guys are suspiciously quiet. I hope, I hope there are no questions because you guys are just so confident and it's so easy that it's not a problem. Okay. So, the sentences that you guys gave me before are right here. The first ones were arrangements for the evening. We're going to look at some of these sentences and decide if any of them need to be corrected or not. I'm taking, oops, that was my typo, I think. I'm taking a class and then probably watching a TV show. I think those were my typos. I was trying to do two things at once. Sometimes that's hard. Okay. I'm taking a class and then probably watching a TV show. If we're talking about arrangements for the future, I want you guys to think, is that appropriate or is it not? So arrangements for the evening. Can anyone give me a justification? Is that appropriate? Is it not appropriate? What tense did we use? I'm taking. Present. Uh-huh. So we use the present what? Present. Present continuous. Yeah, sim uh, present continuous, not the simple present. And it's for personal arrangements. So, was that correct? Is that appropriate? Yes. 
Yeah, yes, it's totally I... appropriate. Exactly. I'm taking a class and probably watching a TV show. Those are personal arrangements. Excellent example of an appropriate way to use that tense. The next one, I will go check my mailbox. So we used will. Do you guys think that that's the best tense or should it be changed? Anybody? I'm checking my mailbox. Okay, yeah, that would be another way to do it. If it's a personal arrangement, you say, oh, I'm, I'm checking my mailbox and then I'm doing something else. I think that's probably an improvement to say, I'm checking versus I will check. But if we had the context, like if it were a decision you were making right at that moment, you could possibly justifi justify the will plus an infinitive. Though I think it sounds a little bit awkward because it probably isn't that, but it could be justified. Okay. But, uh, it's a bit confusing because uh, you, I'm, I'm checking my mailbox seem, mm -hmm. seem as if you are doing it uh, in the present. It, it does sound a little funny if you've never heard it or not, if you haven't used it much. It does sound a little bit funny, but if you listen to the way that I speak, it's something I use all the time. In fact, I use will very infrequently. I do use it, but not very frequently. I'll use the other ones more frequently because they're very practical. And for example, the sentences that you gave me, I will go check my mailbox, then I will attend class. You used will for both, and it's clear that you're talking about personal arrangements. So, although it's not a big error, it's not like a big mistake, but it just sounds more natural. If, if someone said that to me, I will go check my bell box, then I will attend classes, I would know two things. I would totally understand what they were saying, but I would also know that they were not a native speaker because it's an awkward way to say that. It's not wrong, it's just unusual and kind of strange sounding. Okay, we've got... Teacher, yeah. I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Uh, actually, two questions. The first one is related to the first sentence. And uh, you know when he said, like, I'm taking a class. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's give me a sense like he's talking right now. I'm taking a class right now. So that's proper, right? So he's talking about right now, not about yeah. the future. Well, um, it is about the future if you have the right context. So, for instance, if someone just said out of the blue, oh, I'm taking a class it would sound like it was right now. But if someone was talking about their evening, they might say something like, oh, this evening I'm taking a class. And I would know that it was for the future, and it's still an appropriate tense to use. In fact, more appropriate than most other tenses. If you said, this evening I will take a class, it kind of sounds stiff and strange. Mm. Sounds much more natural to say, this evening I'm taking a class. Yeah, but he has to mention like uh, evening or tonight or something like that. Yeah, uh, sometimes we need those context cues and we don't always have them like, it's possible he said something else. I just copied down short sentences so that we could talk about them. But okay. in the context of what he was saying, it might have made more sense. And teacher, sorry, the second one is, uh, what's the difference between saying like, I will go check my mailbox and I will go to check my mailbox? Um, so, the only difference, let's see, there's not really a difference actually. I will go to check my mailbox. No, there's not a difference. It's not necessary to say I will go to check my mailbox. I think it's more common to not add the two there. Like, I will go put clothes in the dryer, I will go run a mile, I will go do something else. We usually leave off the two in that case, even though it's an infinitive verb. Okay. Awesome questions, guys. Any other questions before we do that last set? We have a couple more sentences here. Is this like super confusing or is it relatively simple? Um, how about... I feel like maybe you guys are still confused. Rohan, give me some of your thoughts. Do you feel like this is sort of a difficult, subtle, complex thing that we're learning, or do you feel pretty comfortable with it already? 
Uh, to be honest, I feel comfortable to make the sentences, uh -huh. but the theory is a little bit new to me because I've I haven't really studied uh, the grammar. Really, I've I've learned more from uh, listening to movies or watching, mm -hmm. reading books. Uh, so if you explain what I have to do, then it's easy <laughs> for me to make the sentence. But if you ask me what is uh, going to and then plus infinitive. Uh, I have difficulty with that more. Got it. Well, we're definitely going to see plenty of, of examples, so hopefully some of that doubt will go away. And I think you're right that a lot of times you just kind of end up repeating the patterns without really knowing a lot of the terms that go along yeah. with those patterns. Yeah. And I think that this class is good. Like some people, they work better if they learn it without actually knowing all that stuff. But other people really want to know the reason why. You know, yeah. why do I use simple present and not going to plus an infinitive? Why do I use continuous and not will plus an infinitive? So this is a good class to kind of, it's an introduction into why we make those changes and some patterns as to how we use those words. But if you never learned this stuff, you probably could get by because in the end, if you want to use will for all future tenses or all future events, that's also something people are going to understand. Even if you don't use these other subtle differences, people will still understand. Yeah. Okay. Let's do these last ones and then we'll go on and do a couple more. Um, I'm going to watch some video and I'm going to plan, I'm going to make a plan for my next day. So, I liked that he used gonna, which is kind of a smushed together version of going to. He was going to plus an infinitive for both. You guys think that's appropriate or inappropriate? And sometimes there's more than one answer here, so it doesn't have to be a black and white thing, which makes it more difficult in some ways and less difficult in others. I think it's correct to use a sentence. Why do you think it's correct? Because maybe it's personal arrangements or it's, uh, oh no, it's general future intentions. It could be a general future intention or perhaps a decision already made. That's yes. the most likely scenario, like you said, because um, the other ones we don't have the right form, but I think you made a pretty good sentence. I think you're right. I think it worked. I don't, actually, I don't even remember whose sentences those were. Maybe it was she. But thank you, guys. So we've gone over these. I'm going to delete them just so we have more space and we know what we're looking at. OK, so now we're going to talk about the intentions for the year. And our sentences are, I'm going to lose a few kilograms, and I'm going to go somewhere abroad. I'm going for a vacation. So we've got two different structures here. We've got. This one, I'm going for vacations, which was the last one. And we've got this one, which is general future intention and decisions already made. Which one do you think is the best for the intentions? Which is the best for this kind of question? Going to or the present continuous? I think going to. Yeah, going to, like we can see here, is the most common way to construct a sentence talking about a general future intention. Um, now, we also have one other small problem. I would change for to on and make vacation singular because it's uncountable. So I'm going on vacation. Now, that's there's nothing wrong with that sentence. It just talks about a personal arrangement, and I think it might sound a little better if we were using going to plus the infinitive, because we're talking about a general future intention that's not yet arranged, right? It doesn't sound like she has her tickets, she's not packed yet, she hasn't really arranged anything. So I think ideally it would be going to plus the infinitive, but it's not wrong or really bad the way that it is. All right. We've got one more section, and then we're going to get a lot more practice. We've got predictions in 2020. Our sentences are, we will be using new devices and smaller computers. We will be able to fold them, I think. 
This was my mistake, not hers. Told them. We will experience more natural disasters, and our planet will be safe, a safer place. We will have more peace. So all of those used will plus the infinitive. Do you guys think that those were in the best tense possible or not? And this time I'm going to go with this specific person since you guys are a little quiet. How about Camilla with a K? Do you think talking about the year 2020 we should use will plus infinitive or not? Mm, yes, I think that we should use uh, will plus, uh, plus infinitive because it's mm, that our predictions uh, not based on evidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, obviously, there's two main choices. If we're going to talk about the year 2020, our options are predictions based on no evidence and predictions when you can see the evidence. So those are our two options. And I'm going to leave it up to you guys if you think that there is or is not evidence here. When we heard we will be using new devices and smaller computers. Do you think there's evidence behind that or no evidence? Someone shouted out. Is there evidence or no? I think evidence. Okay, what about the next one? We will be able, well, well that one's part of the same one. Um, we will experience more natural disasters. Is there evidence or is there not evidence there? Maybe no evidence. Okay. I don't know. Sure. Okay. What about this one here? A planet will be a safer place. Evidence or no evidence? No evidence. <laughs> no evidence, unfortunately. <laughs> and this one, we will have more peace. Evidence or no evidence? No evidence. No evidence. Okay. So I think at least for one or two of these sentences, it might be better if we changed it to going to plus the infinitive, if it's something that has evidence, like for instance, the first sentence where we know that devices and computers have become smaller and smaller, the technology has gotten better and better, that's a pattern we've seen in the past, so it makes sense we would see it in the future, there's evidence there. So I would say maybe we could change that one. It's not something that's totally 100% necessary, but the way that it's phrased here we will be using new devices. It almost seems as if she doesn't believe or like it, she's giving us this totally new idea. And of course it's not really a new idea because it's something that we've all seen before. So it's not a big mistake, it's a totally correct sentence, but the subtle context is different than if we had phrased it in a different way. All right, any questions on everything we just talked about? We have a solid 10 more minutes to get a lot more practice here. We've got sentences. And what I want you guys to do is I'm going to give you each one. And you're going to tell me what form we're using. And then if you think it's the most appropriate or not, based on the sentence. So it might be helpful if you have all of these things, all of these rules open. You might want to have to scroll back. And I can do that for us as well. But we're just going to read the sentence, decide what it's using for tense, and then whether that's appropriate or not. And Ahmed, will you go ahead and start us off and do number one, read the sentence for us? Okay, I'm going to eat uh, at my friend's house uh, this evening. Okay, so uh, tell us, what's the tense used? Uh, going plus two. Mm -hmm. okay. Going to plus an infinitive. Do you think that's the best tense or not? And tell us why. It's um, yes, it's an intentions for uh, evening, so I think it's the best one for uh, for this sentence. Okay, that I think that this sentence works, though not because it's a future intention. The future intentions in this column are not yet arranged, but she probably has already arranged her dinner, so the justification for it might be this one. I think you're right that it works really well. Mm -hmm. okay. And probably because it's a decision already made. Now we could also change it to a personal arrangement if we wanted, but that's not necessary. It just depends on what you want to say. 
All right, let's look at sentence number two. Ana Carolina, tell us about that one. Ana Carolina, are you there? No, Ana Carolina, not there? No, I can't hear you. Try and reload. I'll have someone else do too and I'll come back to you once once we can hear you. Camilla with a C, will you read number two and tell us about it? Look at the man on the roof. He he'll fell. Right, so this is the part we're focusing on. What tense are we using there? Uh, will? Yes. So do you think that that's the most appropriate tense or not? Um, yeah. And why do you think that? Because he is in the future, he mm -hmm. will fall. Okay, so what one are you going to use for justification? Is it a decision? Is it a promise? Is it a prediction based on no evidence? Mm, a prediction. Mm -hmm. I think it's a prediction. Okay, so that's a possibility. But again, I think it's possible we would change it to a prediction with evidence because we're looking at the man on the roof, right? So yeah. probably if we're looking at him, we have some evidence of what we're about to say. Now, it's possible we don't. Maybe you're just kind of a scaredy cat and there's no reason for you to think that he would fall. You're just afraid almost for no reason. It's possible to say he'll fall, but... If, you're, if you see him like wobbling or if he seems like he's in a dangerous position, that means you have evidence and you probably would say, oh my God, he's going to fall. Not he will fall, but he's going to fall. So the, both are possibilities here. It just depends on the situation you're actually experiencing. Okay, number three. Uh, Anna Carolina, are you there? Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Okay. Teacher, I, may I ask you a question? Of course. When I, when I wrote, when I gave you my sentence, I said, we'll, we'll be experiencing. Uh-huh. Is it wrong? No. So, which one are you talking about? We will be experiencing, which sentence the was this? Natural disasters. Oh, I see. We will be experiencing more natural disasters? Yes, I said it. Okay, so first of all, um, that one we can say is in the will form. And as long as you agree that it's based on no evidence, then will is appropriate, though I personally sort of think that there is some evidence, so maybe we would want to change that, but otherwise it's okay. So are you just making sure because it's continuous? My, my doubt is if we are going, and um, no, how can I explain? Uh, we, I, I want to say that she, oh my gosh, she, <laughs> It is something that we will be doing, you know uh -huh. what I mean? We will be I don't know how to, to explain. Yeah. Um. We will be, for, for instance, we will be traveling through space. Not that, uh, I mean, it will be happening in the future, you know what I mean? So... I, are you talking about I think I think maybe maybe you for that we will be traveling to space. Um, I think that might be well it depends. If you say we will be traveling to space as in oh yeah, by the year two thousand and fifty we will be traveling to space. Like you're you're kind of throwing out a prediction that there's not a lot of evidence for. So I would say that it would be perfect if that was the context. If the context was you making a joking remark about something you have no evidence for, we'll be traveling to space. It's so far in the future, it's crazy. 
we'll be traveling to space. That would be an appropriate way to say it. Does that make sense? Is that your question? Mm, more or less. I, I, will, I will study T a bit more later. Yeah, these rules are very easy to find online as well. If you just Google search future simple present uh, going to present continuous and will, there's plenty of exercises you guys can do for continual practice as well. And of course, if you guys have more questions on this and we don't have time to get to them all during class, you're welcome to send me messages and I'll help you or give you links to more exercises that might help. I can correct or answer any questions you have. Don't be shy. You can come on over and send me a message and we'll talk about it. Okay. okay. Have you um, seen my request, teacher? Yeah, do you have a question? Have you seen my request? Your request? Yeah. Um, on did you send it to me recently? Yeah. True verbling, yes. Uh, wait, wait. Did you just send one under Khalid? No, I sent, I asked for materials on Berlin uh, messages. Um, I sent them to you. I sent you two files. Did you see them? Oh, not yet. Okay, thank you, teacher. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Yeah, okay. I remember that was after a couple classes ago. All right, go ahead, Anna Carolina. Sorry about that. Okay, no, no problem at all. Uh, this black cloud tell me it's going to rain. Uh, it's right because we, it's based on evidence. Right? Excellent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well done. All right. Number four, Camilla with a C. Will you read number four and decide if it's the appropriate tense? The rain will leave at seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Appropriate? Mm. Yeah. Why? Because it's future. Uh-huh. What kind of future? What's the context? Is it a prediction, a promise, a decision, a refusal? A uh, prediction, like it's evident. Um, okay. But this one is a prediction with no evidence. So when we use will plus the infinitive, it's a prediction based on no evidence. And usually, Usually, if we're talking about a train, there's like a schedule, right? It's not like any random time, but it leaves every day at 7 o'clock, or um, it has a very predictable schedule that they post everywhere. And which one do we use most frequently for schedules? Anybody? Mm. Timetabled events? What's the tense we most frequently use? The present simple. The present simple. So the best way to say something about trains leaving in the future would be the train leaves at 7 o'clock. I wouldn't rule out um, that it's correct. Like, for instance, if you wanted to say it was a promise, like, if I gave you context, like, maybe the train is supposed to leave at 7 o'clock, but every day it's late, so it doesn't leave until 7.15. Maybe the conductor would come out and say, no, today, really, it's true, the train will leave at 7 o'clock, I promise. So it's possible to make it into a promise. It depends on the context, but it's possible. In just the normal, everyday context, I would change this to the simple present. All right. So we are about out of time. I have another class coming up right now. But again, if you guys have any other questions, please contact me. Um, Mustafa, did you have another question or are you good? Yeah, I have a question about more national disaster. Can we say that or not? Which one? He's going to fall? No, no, no. The, the second one. More national disaster we will be experienced. Can we say that or? Um, yeah, but I would reverse it. It sounds a little bit odd to have the object first. So we will be experiencing more natural disasters would be fine, but not with an ED. Okay. We will be experiencing more natural. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. Sorry to cut you off. Let me know if you've got questions. I'm starting another class right now. So if you join that one, you're also welcome to ask any last questions you have in that class. And that one is on sentence correction. So it will be very relevant in that class. Thank you guys all for coming, and I will see you again soon.
Bye. Thank you. My name is Michaela. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. And today we're talking about sentence correction. We'll be correcting lots of mistakes made in sentences and trying to trick each other with our own. This is a class that was requested by a student, and the last class was as well. I've had um, requests for future tense and requests for sentence correction. I also have a few other requests coming up, including things like Poetry, book excerpts, sarcasm, humor, fairy tales, environmental crimes, and things like that. If you guys have a topic you'd like to see covered, or any ideas, creative, fun ideas for future classes, definitely let me know. Message me, or contact me, and or let me know in class, too. Just say, hey, I'm looking for a class on blah, blah. And I can get that together. I love to make new classes. Is this fun for me as it is for you? All right. The document is on the screen where you can join. I'm also going to screen share for you guys, of course. Yes, I have one of the free time in the evening. Ah, great. I was lucky. I got the same free time as you. <laughs> and Ahmed, welcome back. Good to have you. Okay. So, this sentence correction is going to be all kinds of sentences that they have a mistake. Some of 